so I met uh, Ben Coccio at the Donut Pub one day in New York City, and we, you know, I told him this idea I had of this triptych of these fathers and sons, these choices, and uh, and he seemed to really, you know, get on with it, you know, and um, yeah, I came to find out that he was from Schenectady, where my wife was from. We were like, oh wow, this is such an interesting place, and found out that his favorite movie was Goodfellas, as was mine, and. So we shook hands and we agreed to three things. We agreed we would tell this triptych movie told in linear fashion. We wouldn't cross-cut it or put it in a blender. It'd be three stories that made up for one movie. We agreed we'd shoot it in Schenectady, uh, where, where he came from, and we agreed that we would write a role for Ray Liotta. So flash forward four year, five years later, I'm sitting in a room like this with Ray Liotta, and it's a dream come true to work with that guy. I feel like he's a, a national treasure. I feel like someday they'll be uh, carving his face in mountains, you know. Yeah. And then uh, and he's okay. great, and it's a great part for him too. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's the best. He's he's for a filmmaker like me to put him, you know, who likes uh, to capture life. Who likes uh, to be in moments that are uncomfortable? Who likes to uh, likes it when things break? You put Ray Liotta at a dinner table with eight other actors. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be magic. You know what I mean? He has an incredible ability ability to unnerve uh, people, and to me, that's just a great gift. You know. Um, so I'm curious, what is it as a director that, that you really love about working with Ryan and what makes him such a good... I mean, I think he's one of the best actors of his generation. No what makes him that good? No doubt. He's just a magic, magic person. He just makes the world a better place, you know? He walks around, you see him breaking up fights on the streets of New York. Well, if you have him on a movie, that's what he does on the movie, too. He makes... He makes the movie better. I can say about my relationship with Ryan, I was having dinner at his agent's house with him in 2007. This was two years before we shot Blue Valentine. And I was, uh, you know, I had started work on the script of Pines. I had been about six months into it. Anyway, I was at, we were having dinner and I was asking him, I was like, so what, uh, you, what, you've done so many things in your life, Ryan. What haven't you done that you want to do? And he says, oh, well, I always wanted to rob a bank, but I'm too scared of jail. I said, oh, really? I'm writing a movie about a bank robber. I said, how, how would you do it? And he said, well, I'd do it on a motorcycle because I could go in with a helmet and no one would know who I was. And then I would leave. And the motorcycles are fast and agile so I could get away. And he says, and then I'd have a U-Haul truck parked about four blocks away and ride up into the back and drive off in the truck. No one's looking for a truck. They're looking for a motorcycle. And I said, you got to be kidding me. That's, what, uh, that's just what Ben has written into the screenplay. And it was one of those times when I knew that we were destined to to work together because we had you know similar ideas, you know, complementary ideas. And so I told him, I said, "Hey, I'll make your dreams come true." You know, so we were planning to do Pines long before we ever shot Blue. We just knew we had to do Blue first as the stepping stone. Yeah, we shot this movie before Silver Linings, and and I have to say, uh, I had a meeting set up with Bradley. I'd been meeting a number of actors for Avery. I didn't know who was going to play him. I did not think it was going to be Bradley Cooper. I thought that he was just that guy from The Hangover. I didn't really have much, you know, I mean, I'll meet with anyone, but I didn't think much was going to come of it, you know? When I met him for the first time, the way, there was something about the way he was sitting, and there was something about his presence that I was just really taken with him and he was unlike the person that I thought I was going to meet so immediately I was surprised which is a good thing and uh, I started realizing that he was a lot like me as a man he was dealing wrestling with a lot of the same issues that I deal with and I started to think that wow if I can if if he if he's changing my perception then maybe I can make a movie and show him in a way that also changes other people's perception of him so I went back and rewrote the script based on kind of Bradley and kind of this idea you know Avery so Avery all of a sudden became this guy who to everyone was the all-american most popular kid leader of all you know who didn't feel that way who had this kind of toxic shame inside of himself uh, and felt corrupted 
inside of himself and was trying to do the right thing. He was a good person, but instead of dealing with it in himself, he decided to clean up the corruption around him, and that thing inside of himself just kept rotting, you know? And, uh, and it was a very, very brave role for Bradley to take because it's a morally ambiguous character, you know what I mean? And, you know, is he likable or not likable, whatever they say in Hollywood, you know? Like, uh, is he sympathetic? I think he's empathetic. I think you can feel... Uh, a guy who's really conflicted and a guy who wants to preserve himself. You know, ultimately that's his, that could be his character fly, is that he's interested in self-preservation. But that's also Darwinistic, and that's, that's the basis of my movie. It's about survival. It's about how ruthless we have to be as human beings to survive. It's about our ancestors with all the blood on their hands that did whatever they had to do to survive. And now we're civilized and we're domesticated, but we're still that animal. It was an absolute dream cast for me to work uh, to work with everyone. They, uh, you know, uh, you know, I can just pick one. I mean, because I can't, instead of speaking broadly about yeah. everyone, let's just you said Ben first. So I'll just talk to you about, about Ben. Ben, ben I had only seen Animal Kingdom. I didn't know he was like this Australian actor since age thirteen. He came into uh, an audition with me. And he looked like a wreck, and he was wearing a plastic bracelet, and I couldn't tell if it was from a party the night before or a hospital band. And uh, he said, "Oh, mate, you're not gonna make me. Uh, uh, you're not gonna make me audition for you. It's just gonna ruin the whole thing." He said, "He says, just give me the role, and I'll carry a spear for you." And I said, "Okay, you got it." Uh, like that within 10 minutes he had, I gave him the role just because he asked for it that way and now the character Robin as written in the script had dentures now Ben has had a lot of dental work done so after I gave him the role 10 minutes in the next thing he said what are we going to do about the teeth and he says I could get he, I said I don't know what do you think we should do he said I could get my teeth taken out for you and I said, really? He says, yeah, I've had a lot of dental work done. Said, It'll be no problem, mate. And I said, oh, okay, fine. And gave me the number of his dentist. When he left, I called his dentist. This shows you how mad you can get making a movie, how like how uh, morally compromised you can, make, you can be to make something great. I called up his dentist. Within a week later, his dentist sent me his dental x-rays. <laughs> wow. And we were scheduling an appointment for Ben to have his teeth pulled. And Ben was all for it. Thankfully, my producers... <laughs> uh, they intervened? They intervened and told us, you cannot have Ben Mendelssohn take out his teeth for you. And Ben was like, why not? And I was like, yeah, why not? I'm, you know, now all these years later, Ben and I can look at each other and have a laugh about it, and I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, I'm so sorry I even considered doing doing that. Uh, you know, uh, but the fact that he offered uh, it just meant the world to me. Dane uh, was originally uh, they the casting director had asked him to be AJ, right? And Dane had told my casting director, "No, I'm not AJ. I'm Jason." And uh, so he put himself on tape as Jason. And my casting director said, there's this good actor, Dane. He said, I, I thought he should be, uh, you know, AJ, uh, but he wants to be Jason, so he won't read for AJ. But he did a Jason tape. I was like, who is this kid? Who, is he, who does he think he is, you know? Was lot, that really kind of your a reaction? Lot of, a lot of gall. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's too good to play AJ? All right, fine. We'll find someone else. I didn't look at the tape. I looked at 500 other tapes, met hundreds of other kids six weeks out of production who the, I, I don't know who I'm going to cast I'm law, I can't find the guy you know I was just like oh yeah I remember that tape of that kid that kid with the, that arrogant kid who, who said he would only play Jason take a look at it and it, he knocked it out of the park he was he was Jason you know and I couldn't stop watching the tape and he was, you know, he had made the tape before he went off and shot Chronicle. And I met him the day on his way back from shooting Chronicle. He came into, and, uh, and you know, I hired him on the spot because he's, he was just such a great guy, you know. Uh, and, and he was right, and I trusted him from that point forward because he knew more than me. And he was right. And that's the thing with casting a movie like this or any movie or making films in general. It's all about trust. That's the intangible that you need between artists. You know, you all need to trust each other. And so I trusted every one of my actors with my life.